Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number 34 of the Gateway Project, in which we are supposed to launch the Nauka. We'll come back to that, because in the last episode, we sent a launch to Minmus, so that we could have a janitor taking care of the space station that's around Minmus, and allowing Jebediah to come back, until such time as we decide we need to go back to this station, or to scavenge some parts off the ground, but we don't think that we have any more use, the anomalies aren't providing any additional information, so we're going to come back home and assign Jebediah to a new town task. We have just decoupled my new cryogenic second stage that brought us here, and it's going to flip itself around and then head down into Minmus to be destroyed. We would still like to not have orbital debris if we can help it, although Bill's new mandate is that he wants to start focusing on redundancy. That's what we're going to do in the next series. In this one, we're going to just try to keep that orbital debris down and work out the logistics of what to do next time. Meanwhile, the capsule is coming in and we should be docking here momentarily to the KSS number two, Kessler Serenity. Once that's done and Jebediah starts back, we're going to have a few things to do back at the other KSS. We have to deorbit the Pierce module because we need to make room for the Nauka to go up there and dock where it used to be. And finally, time permitting, we're going to try to start investigating those moon anomalies, but it just episode after episode, it seems like the time is just running out and we're not really getting a chance. So we might just have to force some time. So right here, we have our capsule gliding in and any moment now he's going to dock up and transfer over there. Krantz told him that he might have to stay here for at least a year keeping this station active. So he's brought with him the collected works of Martin R. R. Kerman, and he plans to go through all of those at his leisure, which I'm sure he's going to have a lot of leisure time if nothing's going to be happening here. So we'll do a little bit of a crew transfer and then Jebediah will be heading home. First though, I would like to go up to the KSS and decouple that Piers module and have that sent back and destroyed. But when I go to check my map, I notice that I have a leftover stage here on my on my tracking and I want to go and see if I can deorbit it and make this an opportunity to test out what's going on with my deadly reentry. Where sometimes stages like this don't actually uh, burn up the way that I want them to. So I've clicked on it here to keep an eye on the temperature and I'm watching the temperature rise and fall as it spins through the air and it seems a little bit unpredictable and random at times, but at least it is basically going up. However, I notice that even though it gets up to an okay temperature and starts getting to some re-entry effects, it never actually does any meaningful burning up. So then I open up the debug window and I take a look at the part itself and then I see the problem. The problem is that it's showing up as a uh, max temperature of 2900 and, and we're never going to get to that temperature and deadly reentry is supposed to change the numbers that are anything that's over a certain limit uh, where it considers it unrealistic and so it just cuts the value in half and I guess that didn't actually happen to this fuel tank so that's why the fuel tank is not burning up in this particular case. So then I switch over to the KSS and I decouple and I start deorbiting my peers module on that progress craft. However, I had a crash and so I lost all of the footage of me deorbiting. Well, I guess we'll just skip and go on to the next thing.
Ladies and gentlemen, you have just watched the Atlantis STS-135 that launched on July 8th of 2011. It was the very last space shuttle. The 37th shuttle to launch to the ISS, it returned home on July 21st. It carried only a crew of four, commanded by third-timer Christopher Ferguson. It carried on it the Raffaello multi-purpose logistics module, as well as a lightweight multi-purpose carrier that brought back a failed ammonia pump. That was in a previous episode. We had that ammonia pump. And then on this, the space shuttle you just saw as Bob went out and he EVA grabbed onto that failed pump and he put it into the cargo bay of the shuttle. The 180th and last payload delivered to orbit by the shuttle was a Pico satellite it had on it some experimental solar cells trying to be more efficient with future solar panels and it relayed information about how well its solar cells were working back down to earth by the way pico just means small very small so it was a very small satellite when they call it a pico satellite okay so now we are heading back to enter into Kerbin's atmosphere and try to land the shuttle if you remember the last time i tried to land a shuttle it didn't go so well and this very first time i think some stuff on the exterior was oh no well i was gonna say maybe some stuff like lights were blowing up but no, the whole nose blew up. So deadly re-entry and this CSS space shuttle, when it comes to landing, they just don't get along very well. Also, Ferrum Aerospace doesn't get along very well with this CSS shuttle. But I try to land it anyway, even though it's flying backward. I'm going to give it my best shot and I crashed. So we reload, and I try again, and we'll see if we can get it this time. This time's gonna work. I'm using MechJeb to try to force an execute on my surface maneuver, but stuff is blowing up from deadly re-entry again, and we're falling again, Ferrum. Now, this is the same as last time, and the only thing I expect to not happen is to not crash this time. What I want to do is try to land it just to see whether or not I can save them. And it looks like I'm getting it nice and slow right there. And then I crash again. So never mind. We're going to terminate that. I will just rescue the crew some other way and we're going to move on. And what we're moving on to is a Proton M launch with the Nauka up on top. We'll just wait for the ISS, KSS, whatever, to be flying pretty close to mission control. And then, oops, a couple Kerbals in there. We'll just use Crew Manifest to take them back out again. And then power up the engines, and away we go. We have liftoff of the Proton M carrying the Nuka module on its way to the KSS, delivering new Russian research functionality. This first stage's thrust to weight ratio is very low, so we're going to be going pretty slow here in the beginning, but it'll get going faster once we get a little higher, reducing some of our fuel mass, and eventually once we drop that lower stage, then we'll really be going. So this is very definitely now moving us into the future of our dimension's real ISS because obviously the Nuuka has not launched in our world. Its other names uh, might be the FGB-2 because it's based on the Zerya module's same basic design or you might hear it called the MLM, the Multipurpose Lab Module. It was originally planned way back in the 90s, along with a few other... Well, I guess it wasn't really planned then. There were a bunch of research modules that were planned, and in the early 2000s, that got canceled. Pretty much everything got canceled, so they replaced it with Anuka, and that was supposed to go up, like, maybe in 2004, let's say. But it got delayed, and they moved it to 2007, and then it was 2008, and then 2009, and then 2011. Finally, it was supposed to launch last year, 2013 in December, and then that got moved until April of 2014, and then it was May, and then it was June, and now NASA thinks that it's not going to launch before even November of 2015, so 
so we may have a very long wait before we actually get to see this module for real up there. My guess is they're just going to keep that real peers module docked up until such time as they really know for sure that this is on its way. In our case, we already got rid of that peers module and now we're going to release our fairing because it's time to show all of Kerbin what we have here. We're ready to bring them new volumes of science for all of the Kerbal scientists to evaluate and hopefully discover all the secrets of the anomalies. We're going to open up our solar panels right here. I'm doing that by hand with and without an action group just because sometimes I like to click on things. So if you're wondering like, why doesn't he use action groups? Well, I like clicking. So now check this out. I think we're going to go from the surface up to the station again, right? Because of course that's what we've been getting used to. That's what I've been doing a lot of. So let's see how well we do this time. Okay, so we have that third stage there burning away and we'll just decouple that. Now if you look over on the left hand side, you can see in my flight computer window, it shows that my closest approach is still in the order of over a hundred kilometers. Okay, well, let's see how much better we can do with that. So we keep on pushing. My apoapsis is working its way up there. The uh, ascending node there is pretty close. The inclination is a little bit off though. So let's see, I'm probably going to have to trim that a little bit. It's still really close to me, but that just means it makes it easy for me to work on that. Okay, here we go. Closest approach. We're still in the order of uh, less than 100 kilometers now, but we're getting closer. All right. Oh, there's a second target down there. We're going a little bit above, but we're coming down. All right, let's see here. Here we got oh, 100 and 300 meters. Let's get that down a little bit lower. All right, 40, 40, that's pretty good. I wonder if we can get even better. We do have our RCS. We could turn that on and maybe just tap a little in different directions to see which direction is actually making it go down. Is it forward? Is it backward? A little to the right, a little to ooh, ooh, 14, nine meters. I think that's pretty good. A nine meter intercept. I'll take that. And here's a look at my Nauka in the vehicle assembly building sitting on top of my Proton M rocket. So it has its central fuel tank, which I believe is where they put their oxidizer. They put their liquid fuel out here on the outside above the six engines. And then if we move our way up from there, we go into stage two and then stage three. And then we get up into the fairing itself where we have the Nauka and I have it up with a little tug attached to it. In a previous episode, I launched, oh, let's not take that off there. I launched the POISC module with the airlock that was supposed to go on here already in place on the side of it. Well, because I welded it together into that POISC module, I'm not going to be able to actually take it off and move it like they would normally do. So instead, I've had to put this one on here with a tug that I will use to then move it over to the docking port where it belongs. I'm trying out some new solar panels from the near future pack. I scaled them up a little. When they extend, I believe they look a bit like the real solar panels that belong on a module like this. Plus, this one is supposed to come up in the future of our world. It hasn't even happened yet anyway. So uh, maybe they'll have these newer panels that they can put on there, I don't know. Moving in here, we can see that I also have attached in there a scaled down version of a radiator, which is also on the POISC module, except I'm not going to be able to move it. And so therefore I've already attached it here. Other than that, you can see we have the usual docking nodes and lights on the outside of it. It has some launch hardware that will get removed by EVA. And that brings us down to the actual part itself that is all welded together. This basically looks a bit like a Zerya module. Oh, there's some more launch hardware right in there. We'll take that out, but we're down to just about what's left in it. That's all of it right there. One big welded part. Back in orbit, my nine meter intercept 
jumped up into the hundreds as soon as I turned the engines on. So it was pretty close there when we were actually trying to target it, but maybe not so close in reality, because in reality, the moment you affect anything about what you're doing, turning on the engines, for example, it completely throws it off, but it wasn't that far off. Once I got the engines going, the number just steadily dropped from the hundreds back down again until I had it at, it, it, uh, well, you can see right here. We're now at 70 meters intercept. And really, I'm not even paying attention to that anymore. Right now, I'm just working on re-angling us so that we can slide in underneath the station and bring this up underneath that Zvezda and dock it there where the piers used to be. So uh, that's just an optical illusion. We're not actually that close to that Hydracraft right there. If we rotate the camera just a little bit, you're gonna see that it wasn't really that close. We are working our way up there, and now we are, bam, docked up. We will never wait to the destruction of Kerbin and the entire system if we don't do anything about it. Yes, you've said this, but you have no proof. Now get in your cell. Have your scientists check my facts. You'll see I'm right. So here we are back up in orbit and I'm moving the small airlock for that side there, that little airlock on the Nauka module and oh, oh, bumped my antenna. We'll have to pull that back in before we can dock up, but there's enough room without that antenna sticking out there and I do have my 500 kilometer antenna there for remote tech to still be functioning since we're right next to the station. Anyway, so we have that hooked up there. Now, that's not actually an airlock where people could go in and out. It's just for little experiments. It's probably a little bit bigger than it really should be if I want to accurately represent what the size of that thing would be. But you get the idea. So we'll take our little tug now that we're done with it. And now this one's going to head back to Kerbin and it gets destroyed. We have no further use for it. So tug be gone. One of the things that I've been doing anytime I send one of these back to be destroyed is I keep checking to see how well it does with its deadly re-entry. Because even after all of these episodes, I'm still having trouble finding exactly the right parameters that I want to put in my configuration file for deadly re-entry to do exactly what I'm looking for, which is to create some really cool smoke trails and re-entry effects and then have it be destroyed. I seem to always get it to either be blowing up uh, too fast or not enough. Anyway, back at Min Miss, here we are. We have transferred all of the existing crew, Jebediah and his friends, over into the return capsule. And at the same time, we also need to make sure they have enough life support and maybe take away some of the trash with them when they go. And once they've got that hooked up, are all transferred over. We can then undock and move away and glide off into a return trajectory that will be able to take us back to Kerbin. Now, because of our inclined orbit, we have a couple choices. We can either try to reorient ourselves or we can go into an orbit that goes uh, back to Kerbin, sort of, well, pretty much like a polar re entry back to Kerbin based on if you start off with this incline then that's how you'll end up if you don't actually adjust your inclination on the way back well they went for the polar method so you can see we're going over the pole right there and when we come back down on the other side that's when we actually are re-entering so we're, we're re-entering going north to south right now and here goes the re-entry on that propulsion stage so it started to explode a little and heat up a little faster than i expected Ooh piece of debris blew off and hit our capsule, but it looks like we're okay. Oh uh, yeah, I cut it really too close there, and so we got rid of that propulsion stage a, a little late, um, but it's better late than never, and here we go now, re-entering. So everything worked out. The debris, even though it came off, it was okay. We have our drogue chutes, then we go to our main chutes, and we'll be down on the ground in no time at all. Jebediah is really excited to be home again. 
because we have some really cool things for him to do. In fact, I cut it out of order. I put this landing after the showing you the space shuttle, but technically this came before the space shuttle. And one of those things was he got to take that shuttle up. And so here we are finishing out with a little flyby. One last look at when Jebediah had the space shuttle docked to the station. Next time on the Gateway Project, we are actually going to go and take a look at one of the anomalies on the Mun, because I have threatened to do it many times now in a few episodes, and I think it's time I actually did it. We also need to launch a special module that wouldn't actually exist for a few years now on the real ISS, probably. We need to do a little bit of cleanup around the station and hear about what's going on with the anomalies and the scientists research that's been happening so we'll take care of all of that until next time i will see you later kerbinauts